it's uh, wonderful to have you here in the studio. Uh, do you have any more information uh, for us on Mr. Mwamba? No, I don't. Obviously, the hospital in Bolton Wanderers are in control of, of that, and that is right that it should be should be that. Obviously, we were in regular contact over the uh, the weekend as things developed, um, but no, it's and it's fantastically encouraging news we're getting today, but. Uh, I don't think any of us should get ahead of ourselves. I think he's got a, a long road ahead of him and hopefully he'll make a full recovery, but uh, it's a very difficult situation. We do need to talk about the Premier League and whether it has a responsibility for the health of its players. Do you believe that it does? Oh, of course it does, a huge responsibility, which is why all uh, young players are screened and heart screened. The medical science that goes on in the clubs is, is, is hugely progressed from, uh, from, where, from where it used to be and the medical facilities, the medical provision. And we had this incident with uh, Petr Cech where he got a serious head injury at Reading back in 2006 and we entirely changed all our medical procedures um, after that. And that's uh, come into play really on Saturday to give, give Fabrice at least a chance uh, of, 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 of surviving and making a recovery. I want to speak to you about this more in depth because I've spoken with a cardiologist, uh, you may be familiar with him, professor at UCL, UCL, Bill McKenna. He's president of the Association of Inherited Cardiac Conditions. He advises the government. So he says that this only happens in young people who have inherited conditions. And you mentioned that you can screen for this. So what he's saying is that the screening program that's in place uh, through the FA that screens teenagers at the age of 16 is not adequate. He says it's inconsistent. He says the doctors that are reading the heart cardiograms are not experts in these inherited conditions. He says it's been patchily instituted since 1995, since the death of Everton player John Marshall. So my question to you is, it looks as though uh, Mr. Mwamba may have been failed by three different Premier League clubs. So is it time for the Premier League and the FA to get together and do a better job? Well, the, the fact is, you can, you know, it's, I, I'm not a medical expert, and I'm not going to sit here and make those comments, but it, it's so easy for you and people like you to ask the questions in that particular way. The reality is, you can find many an expert, a cardiologist, I'm sure, who, who's got a view on these things. Um, what we know is, through our club doctors and the club doctors group and the work that puts it, that's put in place, we have systems in place that we think are, 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 are as good as, uh, as, good as, 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 as could have been expected. And the fact is, you know, let's look at the... What, what, I, I, we are entirely committed to when this incident, uh, if you like, has moved on, and hopefully it's moved on positively to reviewing procedures, just like we have in the past. So we're not uh, we're not Fine. blind to this thing. But I really think you know it's easy to get some cardiologist who probably doesn't have an intimate knowledge of what goes on at all 20 clubs to make make comments, and it's easy for you to follow up uh, follow up on that basis. But we will of course look and see if there's anything that could be done to improve well, the I situation. I think it will be interesting to find out whether or not the different clubs did screen him, and it'll be interesting to see what your review is. But uh, point taken. Let's move on then if we could because uh, I want to talk about the main source of revenue for the yeah. Premier League which of course is TV rights. ESPN's UK MD has said that Al Jazeera may, may make a, a it's a realistic that it will make a bid. Do you expect to see a bid from Al Jazeera? Um, we've not, I've not been interviewed by you before. Um, we've never make any speculation about who will bid for our rights at any point. Can you seriously, can Sky's monopoly or near monopoly, its dominance, let's say, of the rights for Premier League football be challenged? Do I you think see you're getting that into challenged? a very, very dangerous area with your, your choice of words, because clearly we have a Sky highly... Sky is dominant no, in no, the UK we, market. No, we have a highly regulated, highly regulated sales process. We're the only, we are the only uh, sports rights owner um, in, in the UK that is required by definition to sell our rights to more than one more than one entity. So again, I, I, you know, I think your choice of words and, your, and the way you're questioning is quite difficult. Okay, let's move on. A pub landlady recently won a court battle in Europe over her use of a TV decoder to, 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 play, a, to play a game that was being broadcast in Greece. I'm wondering what the future looks like if you can't guarantee your exclusivity that you're selling. Again, Are you, you asked the question where she won. She won on the fact that it wasn't a criminal offence to bring the decoder box and the card into the UK. Where she lost was she cannot show, use that decoder box and card in her pub because that's an unauthorised uh, communication to the public. So she can use it in her front room, but clearly right. that wasn't the purpose of her getting it. So whilst the headlines may be that she won, indeed she did, because she's, she's not committed a criminal offence by, by, as I say, the importing or the use of that card in that box. 
where she's, what she's not allowed to do is, uh, is make unauthorised broadcasts into the pub. So in, w in which sense we still have protection and we will still be able to go on prosecuting and we are recommencing prosecutions now against pubs who use those cards. Tell us about financial fair play and the UEFA rules and negotiations that are happening right now. How's that going to change the landscape? Um, well, you? it's already changing the landscape. The brakes are on. I mean, clubs are working seriously to work within those rules. They cherish the, uh, the participation in European competition. They want to participate in Europe. And therefore, they will be looking to change, change some of their practices. It's good business practice, isn't it? At the end of the day, most businesses want to uh, spend um, what they earn. a little yeah. less, uh, either some or a little less than what right. they earn, so that they make some profits. And therefore, I can't sit here and say it's a bad thing. And therefore, it's a good thing. And if it acts as a restraint and it makes football more sustainable as a business, and therefore clubs more sustainable, it's got to be good. Richard Scudamore, Chief Executive Officer of the Premier League. Thanks very much for being with us today.